Finally, will we see the end of Too Big to Fail? Joining us now, former Clinton White House official and co-host of the serious radio show Left Jab, David Goodfriend and Mark Calabria, Director of Financial Regulation Studies at the Cato Institute. David, is Too Big to Fail dead? Well, it is in its current iteration. That is, when there was this notion that the government would simply come in to bail out a firm, uh, led to tremendous taxpayer exposure, and of course the bailouts we saw some argue, I think accurately, that it was successful. We saved ourselves from financial meltdown. But what the current bill would do is actually create a uh, sort of a bankruptcy process that's administered by uh, government agencies as opposed to the courts. Because something that large, when you have a bank that is that big, that has to be dismantled, the creditors paid, the assets sold, that could simply overwhelm the Delaware bankruptcy courts, for example. So yes. this is not exactly, I, I would say, too big to fail is still there. Um, but it's a complete rehashing of the way the system works you today, see, and it's an improvement on what happens. Well, you see, Mark, I've, I've realized that a lot of things are too big to fail, and <laughs> I've realized that for Wall Street, even Greek debt is too big to fail. And really, if you look at it, for as long as you have the top five institutions, six institutions with 50 or 60 percent of uh, the, the GDP in this country within their asset base, they are by definition too big to fail. You're not going to take them through a bankruptcy court. You've got to keep them active, otherwise the counterparties will think that there's debts hidden here and the whole thing will seize up. Isn't well, the, that, Mark, what we've learned over well, the last I, 10 I, days I'm, again? I'm not sure we've learned that. Uh, and I, Because I, one of the interesting things about the Dodd bill, and we've heard this repeatedly on the floor of the Senate, that this bill is about, or as Barney Frank puts it, creating death panels for financial firms. So in a sense, what this bill is doing is it creates a receivership type regime that like you have for banks today. And receivership is like Chapter 7. It's liquidation. It's not like a Chapter 11 right. reorganization. So this actually sets up a process where I actually think you might increase the chance of bailouts because you're not given an opportunity to reorganize these companies. If it's pulled into this regime, they're going to get liquidated. At least if wow. that's what that's, that's, a, that's what you take the Senate is doing seriously. That's interesting. I, I mean, I haven't heard that analysis before. What you're saying is that by dismantling banks and selling them off, you are encouraging taxpayer bailouts, whereas in reality what's going on here, I think, if we're in agreement here, sure. it is the sale of assets to private parties in order to pay creditors. I think what taxpayers, American voters in general, are fed up with is the notion that heads I win, tails you lose, says Wall Street, that no matter what, the financial sector wins and the American worker loses. I think what, what we can all agree on has changed here, whether the derivatives uh, provision is enacted sure. or not. We have seen a tectonic shift in the way markets are going to be handled by the government. And I think that's a good thing. I talk to CEOs, wealthy, powerful CEOs who say, the investment bankers have me over a barrel. I had no way to get rid of but those fees guys, or deal guys, down. That's this. actually, uh, from we, their perspective, this is an improvement. Have we this incentive? to get bigger and bigger and bigger. That way we know the government will. You know, for example, if you know that a bank isn't going to fail or the government's going to deal with it, me, I'm going to buy those bonds versus a smaller it, it, bank's bonds. It, does exactly. this take care of that, Mr. Colombo? My, my, my colleague, oh, I'm sorry. It, 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 it does not. I think this is the biggest problem in all of this because it's not simply the incentives of shareholders or management. It's the incentives of me to lend money to these companies and thinking that I'll get bailed out or not. Uh, and I think, the, I mean, and I'll, I'll be first to say, this is a hard nut to crack, but the one thing we should be trying to do is re-injecting market discipline on the part of creditors into all of this. And I would be the first to say, we didn't have a whole lot in terms of these institutions going into this crisis, right. but we even have less now. I mean, the reality is, Today and the day after the Dodd bill is signed into law, if I lend money to Goldman, I'm going to assume that I'm going to get it back. And to me, that's the problem. I mean, I, whether even it's, it's a problem, even if the rest of the banking industry is taxed to make those creditors whole, <laughs> it's not simply a problem. I mean, it's a bigger problem the taxpayer pays. But if the rest of the okay. banking industry is paid to make creditors whole, you create all that moral sure. hazard. Mark, but Mark, can I just ask you a question? Sure. There was an amendment on the floor sponsored by Senator Brown from Ohio to literally cap the market share that each ba bank would be allowed to hold. I suppose, I'm just guessing here, that you would oppose that. Actually, I, I do favor the cap on deposit concentration. I think it's legitimate to protect the deposit insurance fund and say that nobody should have more than a certain share of the deposit fund. I will say as well, Freddie and Fannie are bigger than any of those institutions. We should be breaking up Freddie and Fannie tomorrow. You know, and I read, I read um, Donnie Shaw of A New Way Forward that suggested that 
the people that actually voted against that proposal, which you support, had on average a contribution of three and a half million dollars for their campaigns from the financial sector, right. which was actually double what the other side had. Do you feel that's significant? I certainly do. I mean, you want me to take that question? Yes. I, I absolutely do. And I think that what Senator Brown was trying to say is, look, we have antitrust laws in this country that govern uh, market concentration. And in this instance, we have something where an additional, additional law is needed. And he was defeated on the Senate floor, and I All think right. that's shameful. Guys, you hear the music. You know what that means. We're done. <laughs> David, good thank friend, you. good to have see good you evening. again. Mark Calabria, thank, thank you to you, too.